Are you ready for nine examples of toric transposition? A few months back, I had someone ask for some help on some problems that she had found on a prep test. And I shot this whiteboard lesson that's coming up. It's actually a pretty darn good lesson. And it takes toric transposition and looks at it in three different ways, using three different examples for each of those ways. The nine examples that I'm gonna go through are three, three, and three variations of this basic nominal lens formula which says that the power of a lens is equal to its front curve added to its back curve. What this goes into is what happens when we add some, some cylinder into it. So there's not just one curve, but two curves on the back of the lens. Toric transposition is the power of the lens is equal to the front base curve added to a what's known as a toric curve and then a cross curve. You should be familiar with this lens if you watched the opening uh, sessions to understanding prism. If not, I would encourage you to do that. We get real up and close and personal with this one. Uh, you should know its powers pretty much by heart. You should know the red and the green, all that. This is really the exact same thing. If I take this lens, I take a lens clock for what's, what that is worth, and I clock the front curve of this lens. And because it's an old fashioned, plain old CR39 lens, no fancy free form, no nothing, just a basic lens. It clocks at a plus seven. All lenses that we work with today are designed and built in minus cylinder form. That's why we convert everything to a minus cylinder form when we do formulas and such. If I have a plus seven and I know the power of my lens, it's marked here on the outside of my package, minus five, minus two, or a minus seven plus two. And there's no question about it. That's what's in this package. That's what this lens came out of. It's what I've got. To create the curve on the back side of this lens, to provide me with minus five, with a front base curve of plus seven, I have to grind away a curve of minus 12. Plus seven minus 12 gives me minus five. This lens does not have a single curve on it. It has two curves. The other curve, of course, is 90 degrees away. And that power total gives me minus seven. The difference between the curve that gives me my minus five and the curve that gives me a minus seven is two diopters stronger. It's known as the cross curve. And the difference between these two is always equal to your cylinder value. So on the back side of this lens, there's, there, there's no mumbo jumbo or anything. It's, it's here. My shallower curve, my green, I can look at it. I can see it. It's thinner here. It's thicker here. It is, in fact, a shallower curve. This, in fact, is a minus 12 curve. 90 degrees away, I've got my red, which is my minus 14 curve. It is steeper. It is two diopters steeper than my green one is. The combination of this and this and this give me a prescription value. That is what we are trying to think about, draw, visualize, when we're looking at toric transposition, which is a variation of the nominal lens formula. These three are simply the nominal lens formula with the extra step of accounting for the cylinder to write a complete prescription. DL or FL is equal to D1 plus D2 or F1 plus F2, depending on which one you learn. It's right here. You have got D1. This is your front base curve. Added to 
using that nominal lens formula, D2. This is D2 in minus cylinder form. It is my sphere value. It is my shallower curve, my toric curve. If I take my plus A and I add it, just like the nominal lens formula, to my sphere power, I end up at plus 2. If I take my front curve and add it to my back curve, I end up at plus 325. If I take my front curve and I add it to my back curve, I end up at minus 225. That is not an answer. That doesn't give us anything. We have to keep running with this. The full answer to this is I, I need the whole script. This is my sphere power plus 2. I know my sphere power is at 90, so I can fill that in as well. My cylinder value is a difference from 6 to 825, which is minus 225 of sill. 6, 7, 8, and a quarter. This is the answer to this particular problem, because now it's finished. My sphere value in this one is a plus 325. I know it's at 15 degrees. And the difference between 475 and 6 or is 1 and a quarter from here to here. This is the complete script that you can come up with from what you have here. My sphere power is a minus 225. I know it's at axis 135. It tells me here, this is my sphere, this is my shallower curve, that's my toric curve at 135, so that's going to give me the power between those two. And the distance from 675 to 8 is again 1 and a quarter cylinder value from here to here. This is my total answer for each of those three examples. In these three examples, you have got D1 and you have got DL. Since we have two of the pieces, what we can do instead of adding those two things together, we can subtract them and end up with what we need. I, I think we're kind of getting into shortcut territory, but if this is what works for you and gets the right answer, that's fine. I'd, I'd almost prefer if you can think about it more than just work the, the problem to get the answer, but all things in time. If I do in fact take my power and I subtract my base curve, my sphere curve is going to be a minus 750. If I take my sphere power and I subtract away my base curve, my sphere curve is going to be a minus 0.475. If I take away my power from my base curve, I end up with a minus 850. I end up with it at 180 degrees. I end up with it at 30 degrees and I end up with it at 120 degrees. We are not done. This is a spherocylinder lens. It has two curves. It has two different powers on the back. So we need to account for what's 90 degrees away also. My cylinder value is minus 150. My second curve is going to be 1.50 diopter stronger than the other. So on the back here, I'm going to have a minus 9 at 90 degrees. 
I'm going to have four or five, I'm gonna have minus six, one and a quarter diopter stronger, nine at 120 degrees. I'm gonna have minus 850 and 50 stronger, I'm gonna have minus nine at 30 degrees. There is my complete answer. Here is my complete answer. There is my complete answer. Last three examples. What do we have? We have got D2 and DL, D2, DL, D2, DL. What's missing? D1, the front base curve. You will always get the correct answer by doing what I'm about to do. I would encourage you to try to think it through and visualize it more than just using the, the shortcut or the, the, the method. If my end result is 575, what would I need to have up here in order to grind away this so that I end up here? That's the question that's being asked. To find that out, I can subtract this from this, kind of the reverse, rather than adding it together. We're going to subtract those two. And it turns out I'm going to need a plus five here. If I grind, if I have a fixed base, front base curve of plus five, and I grind away minus 575, literally physically grind away a curve of 575, I end up at 0.75. Here's the fascinating little tidbit. 575 is greater than 5. It is more. This is where thickness comes from. If I actually physically ground away at the back of this lens, 575, well guess what? I'd grind right through the middle of the lens. Holy crap. I'd end up with a hole because it's more. It's three quarters of a diopter greater than what I can go beyond. So what do I have to do? I have to start adding material so they don't grind it away. That's where thickness comes from. It's kind of cool. Anyway, this one plus six as a base curve. If I have plus six, I need to take away minus four I end up at plus two. No hole, it's a plus lens, thick in the middle. Last one, base curve on this one, which is my missing piece, is a plus 650. If I have a plus six feet front base curve and I grind away minus 750, seven and a half diopters of material from the back, grind, 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 grind. I end up with my minus one. If I backtracked, I had my minus one, I took away my 750, I end up at a plus 650 for my base curve in this particular problem. And that wraps up the mailbag session for today.